Hello Eye Tracking Community. My name is Michael and in this video we will talk about normalization of data. I would guess that many of you know this problem. You're recording data with different uh, biometric sensors of different participants and in your analysis you want to compare the data with each other. However, the data is not normalized most times. So this means that the range of the data of the different participants is also different. But if you want to compare the data, you have to normalize it. And most times this means to write little scripts, to load the data into Excel, to go through long tables, yeah, to insert new columns, to insert little formulas, to normalize the data. In this tutorial, I will show you how easy it is in BlickShift Analytics to normalize data. So let's have a look. On the screen, you can see an eye tracking experiment with three participants. Um, and in this eye tracking experiment, we also recorded some biometric data. We are merging the eye tracking data together with the biometric data. So this means we are time synchronizing both sensor streams. If you look now at the raw data and we choose here the um, one of the biometric data streams and have a look at all the participants, what we can see is several things. One is that, of course, the behavior of the different participants is also different. You can see that in the biometric um, data. But what you can also see is that the range of the data between the participants is different. So this goes here from, I don't know, two to three. This here is between one and two, and this is around two. For comparing now the participants with each other, we have to normalize it. And I do that now step by step for every participant. So first of all, I choose from the analysis menu, I choose the simple statistics, because in the simple statistics, we can see the minimum and the maximum values. I'm selecting the galvanic skin response value and here I can see the minimum and the maximum of these data streams for the three participants on one screen. And in the next step we will do the normalization. For the normalization I will use the column computation. So I click here on the merge and resample node and I say analyses column computation. I select only P1 because we will do the normalization only for P1. Here we can see the whole data of P1. And what we want to do is we want to normalize the GSR conductance in micro Siemens, um, this column here. So I go to the column computation. Here on the top I choose the column which I want to normalize, so the GSR conductance value, values. The column computation node is now creating a new column for us. It's called new column. I change this name to um, GSR normalized and I say it's not, uh, it does not contain natural numbers, so in uh, in a coding language called um, integer variable, it contains double values, which means um, real numbers. And then I'm inserting a little script. And don't be worried, we will go step by step through this script. So first of all, I define the maximum value for this participant. And I get this maximum value. I go to the simple statistics. Here is the maximum value of the GSR conductance value. So I copy it to the clipboard. I go to the column computation and I insert it here. I do the same for the minimum. So I go to the simple statistics. I click on the minimum. I go to the column computation and I insert it. So for the normalization, what I 
do next is mm, I'm subtracting the minimum value from the current value. So I say double and offset value is and now I take GSR conductance in micro Siemens. So everything I do here in real time. So um, uh, minus minimum. So I can make that a bit larger. Next, I compute um, the difference. between maximum and minimum and then finally the normalized value uh, so normalized gsr is the i can copy that the offset value minus the overall difference and I return this normalized GSR value. I click somewhere on the screen. The column computation changes from red uh, state to um, green state, which means um, everything is fine, no error anymore. And now I can see here that G's are normalized. And now let's have a look what happened. So I have here the um, the line graph, I create a new one. The line graph, I choose the original data stream and I add another line graph to this window showing me the normalized value. And when we compare now these two data streams, what we can see is that on the left side we have a range between two and three and here on the right we have an, a range between zero and one. But as you can see it shows the same data on the left side not normalized, on the right side normalized. So since I did that now for um, the first participant, what I have to do is I have to export this data now. So export to files saying p1 normalized CSV and, and I press OK. And now I do the same for the second participant. So I go to the simple statistics, to the second participant, I copy the value of the maximum value, I go to the column computation, I insert here the maximum value, I go to the simple statistics, I copy the minimum value, I go to the column computation, and here I deleted the semicolon, so everything's fine. Now I have to select here P2 and let's have a look at the data P2 and here we can see now the very nice behavior where the raw data is in a range around 1.5 goes up and here you can nicely see how the normalized data is also going up. I copy that to the next participant. And then I do the same for P3. Please have a look into um, this um, tutorial. There I show you what you can do, for example, with this normalized data. So you can search for it, for example, and can focus on specific sections in your experiment where you want to learn more about the eye movements based on, for example, a different range of the biometric values. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you liked the video, please press the like button, subscribe to our channel and share the video with your community. And I am looking forward to see you in the next video.